Oh, I'm Romain. Uh, who here has been to my other talk? Uh, oh, who here has not been to my talk that I gave earlier? Okay, quite a few people, so. Okay, so that's still me. Uh, so yes, of this. Uh, I don't think I have enough slides to make it uh, to, for, to 20 minutes. So yes, please interrupt me. So otherwise I won't go for the full talk. So yes, a bit of vocabulary. When I talk about Python, I talk about the, um, only the language. So that there's no, I don't talk about implementations. When I talk about C Python, it's the thing you do when you type Python. When I talk about PyPy, it's the Python, well, PyPy is, the, is a Python interpreter written in R Python, and R Python is the language. And while well, sometimes people call PyPy PyPy, and so I just put it there to clarify. So, yes, um, this is more of an introduction to PyPy, it's more beginner level compared to my other talk. So yes, PyPy is an interpreter written, written in R Python, and the main goal now is speed. And at the same time, we don't want to support only a, a subset of Python, we want to support the entire Python language with it and still be fast. So yes, R Python, um, it's a language, and at the same time, it's a framework for writing virtual machines, so typically, uh, well, and, uh, examples of virtual machines are, well, the C Ruby, the JVM, all of that. Um, it's a subset of Python, so it's, it's a subset that in, on which you can run type inference. So it's a statically typed language, so it, it, well, it looks a lot like Python, but when you, f when you write some, it's, it's not that nice to use. I mean, the main, the main the main thing is that you can add a just-in-time compiler, and well, that's the main that's the main advantage. I mean, writing R Python without getting a JIT, of, that's not that nice to that's not that, that nice to do. And uh, you also have pluggable garbage collection, so you can put well, the last one now, the default one is an incremental garbage collector. And so yes, since it's a framework, you can write you can write virtual uh, normal interpreters and have a JIT for free. So yes, all of those have, have implementations written in PyPy, more or less, uh, well, more or less implemented and all that. And yes, and even a Game Boy emulator, so I think that's kind of cool. So yes, PyPy, uh, well, it's already, well, more than 10 years old now, uh, still pretty old. Um, so yes, the problem with Psycho was it was hard to maintain, and well, it was the, t the time when well, 64-bit came, and well, it wasn't compatible with 64-bit um, and things like generators, and well, it's it was really hard to add to add new features. So PyPy is much more modular, and well, you can add as many features as, as you want, and the JIT automatically follows, and. So, and there's, yes, three main backends. Um, the most developed one is x86-64, but ARM, uh, ARM is also pretty advanced, and x86, uh, I'm not, <coughs> well, I don't think, there's some things missing, well, there's, it's not as optimized as x86-64. And so, yes, Linux, Mac OS, and, well, 32-bit windows are supported, um, while well, there's a problem with 64-bit windows and while well, some people sometimes write patches for free BSD and all that stuff and while well, it's well tested and so it's production ready <coughs> for whatever that means. So yes, PyPy is pretty fast um, so that's the speed of PyPy um, today on benchmarks, um, benchmark that runs um, every night, um, so yes, there's a, um, these are real-world benchmark that uses real libraries, it's not like one-line functions. And this is the speed devolution over time, so yes, from June 2010 back there to up to today. Do you bench statistics in Python 3? Uh, 
I know Python 3, well, uh, are you talking about C Python? Uh, C Python 3 or PyPy 3 compared to PyPy 2? C Python 3. Well, it's the same. I mean, the speed of C Python hasn't really changed between. No? no. So, yes, the demo that, well, nobody, well, some people didn't see. So. This is an example of an edge detection algorithm that runs in real time, like right now. So it runs in real time. Um, the webcam is pretty slow. It's not, well, yes. I don't know why the webcam is at 12 FPS, but it's much, much faster. Um, you can see for a smaller video. Um, for a smaller video and, well, it runs at 200 fr frames per second, and if you try the same, the same video on. Oh. Um, if you try the same video on C Python, then it's much much slower. Uh, well, yes, we have some time. I mean, we can take a nap or something, I know. <laughs> well, yes, and while well, quitting it is also pretty slow. So. Um, oops. Yes. so, yes, the JIT optimizes loops. Um, so it's called meta tracing because it traces, well, it traces the interpreter while it's executing your program. Um, so for the JIT to optimize a, a loop, um, it has to run during 139 iteration. Um, tracing allows inlining pretty easily, so it just follows the path of, and just follow the function calls and <coughs> everything is, well, almost everything is inlined. And yes, one path at a time is compiled, so, um, so one branch of the if is taken each time. So if you want to know more, um, you can probably, you will be able to watch the video of my talk, uh, of the talk I gave uh, earlier. So yes, um, micro-optimizing code on PyPy well, isn't really recommended, and especially uh, running micro-optimized code for C Python is, uh, well, is can be harmful. So yes, I saw, um, a uh, post, uh, I think one year ago, I think, of, of Guido on Google Plus who wrote um, how to, well, how to make code fast on Python. And he, he said, uh, well, use tuples instead of objects, avoid writing functions and avoid writing loops. And f I, don't th I don't think that's acceptable, but. So yes, uh, function on PyPy, well, on jitted code, uh, function the Functions don't matter, loops don't matter, and like I know people um, on C Python use uh, map, the map function, the map built-in instead of writing loops, and well, you don't have to do that on, on PyPy. So yes, f about compatibility. Um, so we aim to be as close as possible to the language, except for when we say, well, it's, it's, it's an implementation detail and it's not really part of the language. Um, one big, one big uh, source of bug is that destructors are not, are not called um, as soon as, well, they're not called directly after they go out of scope, as in C Python. So um, it, sometimes it happens that people um, write something in a file, then don't close it and then reopen it directly, but then since the file hasn't been closed, then the, the cache hasn't been flushed or that kind of things. Or people write, open a lot of files without cl closing them. And then, well, you go, you go over the file descriptor limit. So yes, that's, that's, how you, that's how you write, well, yes. That's how you make sure the file is closed uh, on Python. 
and yes, the extension support, um, it's partial. Um, uh, it will always be partial, I think. I mean, and uh, yes, the performance is pretty bad because you have to emulate the, um, the C Python garbage collector, which is reference counting. Um, however, with CFFI, you can write <coughs> you can write code that that interacts with C code, and it's really fast. So, so yes, about the future. Um, so yes, STM. Uh, Armin talked about STM earlier. You can see his talk um, on NumPy. Um, well, there's a well, there's a slow but steady progress towards NumPy compatibility. Uh, we will work more on performance in the in the next few months. And in Python three, I think um, I think it's mostly done. Well, it's mostly compatible, but there's a few optimizations that are disabled. I think. So it will probably happen pretty soon. And well, I'm working on NumPy I, and, I'm, and I'm paid thanks to donations. And well, the more money I have, the more I can work on it. So, so well, if you're interested in this project and well, really want this project for whatever you want, then well, you can, you can donate. And yeah, thank you for listening. And do you have questions? Um, no, but well, we well, I'm working on implementing, uh, re-implementing NumPy, but we are trying to find ways to to connect with SciPy and to interact with SciPy without without re-implementing it. And while well, we're working on ways, uh, well, we're still we're still thinking about it. So, so with uh, matrix-heavy operations, it's still uh, beneficial to not use SciPy, but still. Python, uh, with, uh NumPy has matrices, I think. Yes, yeah, matrices. So then yes, but you can use them in NumPy. I mean, you can use the NumPy module without using SciPy. Yeah, yeah I but I'm, I'm saying uh, not use SciPy, but use NumPy. If you're using lots of matrix operations, I guess. Well, no, but we you can use NumPy on PyPy. No, yes, but well, we are we are trying to make progress uh, on yeah, this, yeah, and so well, matrices are well, matrices are implemented, and well, there there are some things missing, but the core is really there. So if you you can try it out, I mean, wow. if there's stuff missing, uh, well, write a bug uh, with exactly what you need. Uh, usually, that's how I do things. Like what w if I when I'm done implementing something, I look at bug report and see what people report as missing and I implement those first so you can try it out and but, but how fast is uh, matrix calculation then in PyPy compared to C? Well f no well you bail out to R Python so it's as fast I mean well the code is written is written in C anyway so I can have another question um uh, Python is really easy to embed in your own C program, kind of, whatever you want. Like, like for example, done in Blender. Is mm -hmm. PyPy uh, usable for that as well? Um, you can, well, you can use CFFI. I know um, some people wrote a plugin for um, UWSGI, and it embeds PyPy, and, well, it's really fast, and and it works well. It really depends on your usage because you can't really pass Python objects to C and manipulate C uh, a Python object in C and all that. But for c really communication, it's it's pretty good. And you don't have any problem with the memory model of C or C++ and Python? <coughs> um, like what, for example? For example, the garbage co garbage collector. Um. What do you mean? In what way could uh, it? For example, if you want to embed Lua uh, with Python or with another language. Yes. Or why does this work? Um, well, you just have to keep objects alive. I mean, I think um, uh, Lua has automatic garbage collection, so 
I mean, you just have to keep to keep things alive. Uh, I mean, in, Py in Python, you have destructors. So even if you, you can probably embed C Python in PyPy, if you want, and well, for reference counting, I mean, you can you can have a wrapper around the C Python objects and have well increment the reference count in in the init and in the destructor you you remove the reference count. Okay. Well, do you have more questions? Uh, <laughs> like, or maybe if I don't know, like very wide questions or we can uh, do you know how popular PyPy is compared to C Python? I mean how many people use it? Well people use it, uh, I mean but it's you can't really say a percentage of all Python usage. Uh, I mean people are using it and well I mean it's enough to say uh, that well if PyPy dies it will piss off a lot of people but it I mean, but it's not, it's still not in, I don't know, not 1% or I don't, I don't think so, at least. So uh, let's say I'm starting a new Python project. Uh, what should I check for before deciding if I want to go with PyPy or CPython? So let's say that all the library I'm going to use doesn't use C or Fortis. Is there any reason why I should not use PyPy instead of CPython? Um, well, sometimes there's memory usage problem. We're debugging, we're working on them, but while well, some people still have problems, and well, I don't know if your program like runs, for example, Mercurial, like it runs for well a few milli, well not a few milliseconds, but hundreds of milliseconds, and uh, usually um, PyPy doesn't have the time to optimize everything, so it it's usually slower on very very short running programs. You have workarounds. Well, yes, I can speak about it. You can have workarounds like if you, instead of having your command, um, having your script run every single time, you can have a, um, a, command, a command server in which you send the command line to and you keep one process alive during, during well, as much time as you want, but you can one process instead of spawning multiple commands and multiple interpreters. Uh, from what you said, that there are subtle differences. I would expect if you take a bigger existing project, Django or whatever, and you put it to, to PyPy, it will not work. Is that exactly right? Well, I mean, you have unit tests, right? So you, you run your unit tests and you see, but no, I, well, for example, Django works and I don't think a ton of work have been put there. I mean, I don't think there's, maybe, I, I don't know, but there's not hundreds of lines of code changed to make, to make it support pipe. It's probably a few, a few things yeah. here and there. Fine. Well, yes, but well, it's a, it's a Django, it's the Django maintainer's job. So, I mean, if your if your module is un is incompatible, well, the best thing is to complain to them, to the maintainer. I mean. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, there's. Well, for example, yes, Django, but I mean, for medium size um, projects, it's it's fine. I mean, that's probably, yes, maybe, well, it's some project, big projects maybe, but in some big projects, it doesn't. Like, for example, Twisted runs fine, uh, well, tons of things run fine, so. It's mostly, yes. And the first thing you should look, yes, is it's, um, I don't know the error on Linux, but it's well. I think it's too many file descriptors, and well, if you if you find this error, then you know it's a file closing problems. I mean, there's a I think there's a page on documentation which says the differences between PyPy and CPython, and you can go read that. And there's a few of them, but they are not like huge differences. So, yes. I was kind of curious, this is the example you showed just with the image in the webcam. 
the, the difference was that big that I'm kind of curious what did the program do? Was it just doing some calculations for every pixel in a sort of a for loop? Yes. And that's why it's so, that's very bad habit in, uh, in Python, of course. No. Well, that's bad that's habit. It's slow. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. I mean, well, you're, uh, you're having a paradigm because of weaknesses in your language. I mean, we, d we shouldn't care. I mean, you, you do what you want. There's people do what they want. Uh, I mean, people should be able to write loops if they want to. I mean. Yes. So perhaps uh, uh, following this, which is the best way to combine to C Python and PyPy? Combine C Python. Well, we, we can call. Okay. Yes, you can have. Um, I mean. It depends on what you do, but you can have two processes and one process talking to the other. And while we're working on maybe trying to f have C Python embedded into PyPy, uh, that sort of things, and you would be able to call. I mean, it's not like you can pass object, tons of objects from C Python to PyPy and the other. Th that will probably never work, but you can have some interactions between the two.